next up, let's have a look at credit control area as an organizational unit. A credit control area in SAP manages the credit exposure for your customers. So credit checks and credit limits are all managed in a credit control area. Now when you define a credit control area, one way to think about it is that one or more company codes can be assigned to a credit control area. So depending on your company's policy and whether you manage credit on a centralized or decentralized basis or a mix of the two is really going to lead your thinking about how you think about the credit control area. But the main takeaway is that this manages the credit exposure for customers. So let's have a look at to see what the field looks like. So in SAP, it's a four character alphanumeric field. And you'll see here from the test system, basically the credit control area is kind of mapping one to one with company code in a lot of different cases here. It's not my personal recommendation to go one to one with company code. I would prefer a one to many, but we'll have a look at that in more detail now. But in the system itself, you'll see that credit control area is a four character alphanumeric field. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the IMG go into the configuration and just see what that uh, looks like. So as this is in the IMG, we're gonna go to uh, SPRO for configuration, hit the IMG, use the reference IMG, and again, this is gonna be under the enterprise structure and under the definition side, financial accounting, and you'll see that credit control area is at the top over there under company. So define credit control area. You'll see these are the credit control areas here looking similar to company codes, but these are in fact credit control areas. And you can scroll up and down, you'll see um, there's quite a few in the list here. And you can see there's a mix of alpha and numeric um, in the list. So FR001, uh, US01, this is a type of numbering convention um, that I personally recommend to do credit control on a country basis. So let's have a look at one of them. If you go into it, the main idea is you specify the currency and the update rules, which is from um, the way you interact with SD billing and the fiscal year variant. So the update is for like delivery and billing information as an example, or open sales orders. So the, um, the definition is really up to you internally. We'll look at some um, options now, but basically personally, I do prefer a, a country ISO code option versus a company code option. But let's go out and look at some um, use of the master data. So we, let's go to accounts receivable. We will go to the um, credit management uh, transaction and we'll go and display the master data, which is a FD33 for an individual customer. So let's pick this one customer here, 4259, and we'll first look at credit control area 1000 for Europe and see what's happening there. So in Europe for this customer credit control area, he's been given a 15,000 euro credit limit under credit controlling area 1000. But this customer can have a credit limit in more than one credit control area. And we'll explain why later. So here we'll now go into credit control area 3000 for the US. And then you'll see that we now have a US dollar credit limit, 25,000 for this customer. And he's uh, used up um, 23% or 21% of his credit limit for North America specifically. So one customer, two different credit control areas and two different credit limits. And then we have a centralized uh, data screen for the same customer where SAP will show you the total amount of credit that has been granted to this customer, the biggest credit limit he has and which credit control area that is as he has multiple and the total amount of credit permissible across any credit control area in total. So this is a maximum limit across all controlling areas. And we'll discuss those uh, implications now. So now that you understand what a credit control area looks like in its definition and how you apply credit limits to that credit control area, let's have a look at some uh, recommendation options. So, one um, option that I find works um, pretty well is defining credit control area one-to-one -one with a country ISO code so that you can manage your credit, risk on a, your credit risk on a per country basis. So the rationale here is that um, customer credit and contract terms are usually tied to a country's local legislation and currency. So centralizing credit control on a country level is appropriate in this case. So for example, even if you have multiple legal entities or company codes, 
and they have um, the same customer or multiple customers, the credit terms that are applied in the US as a country are normally pretty universal for various contracts, the way you would chase up a bad debt or demand payment. Also, large international customers often have independent credit rules, limits and risks in each country, and they do manage credit on a country basis, not on individual um, legal entities. Because if you have a large customer who has multiple and you do business through multiple company codes, you would still want to manage the credit risk in exposure in total, for instance, in the US for that big customer. If you manage each company code at a time, you have a harder job getting the big picture versus doing a country level, you get a picture in the total exposure in that country and currency. But even if you go this route, this does not prevent a customer being assigned a total maximum credit limit across multiple credit control areas. So the idea here is that even if you have a many to one mapping of company codes to credit control area, i.e many US company codes all mapped to one US credit control area, you can still maintain a maximum credit limit across um, all of the credit control areas that that customer belongs to. So you get the control, but you also get a, a centralized view per country as an example. I would not recommend having a group that spans countries because then it's going to be difficult to manage credit risk across multiple countries uh, in an effective way. Although you can still see it in reporting, my recommendation is go one-to-one -one with country, not one-to-one -one with company code. If you have a, one credit control area per company code, you end up with many credit control areas um, to map to and multiple credit limits that have to be set, as opposed to setting one credit limit per country with a customer, which is a pragmatic approach that I've seen that's been pretty successful. But obviously, in your individual um, business and country circumstance on your own project, you'll have to make your own decision, but this is my recommendation.